In this video, we're going to be looking at pictures that I've taken over 2022. It's the end of the year, um, and what I've decided to do is to show the best, what I consider to be some of my best pictures that I've taken this year. 2022 has been a fairly productive year for me. I've produced 24 YouTube videos and took lots of stills. So what I'm going to do is, is show 12 pictures and I'm starting off in chronological order in January going through to December and showing some of the highlights that for me uh, of some of my photography. What I'm going to do is at the end of the video I'm going to whittle it down to five pictures and I'm going to put them in order of what I consider my best or my favourite pictures. So I'll be interested to see what people think of that, what they, they reckon I've picked out the best ones of the 12. So please put something in the comments about where, which picture you prefer as, as the overall best picture. In March, I was very fortunate to be one of the first people to get their hands on an OM1. So I took it to Elmney Nature Reserve in Kent. Although I photographed lots of birds that day, this shot of mating oyster catchers was one that I was particularly pleased with. They were photographed from the car and I used the 300mm f4, resting it on a bean bag. Whilst at Elmley, I also took this shot of a short-eared owl in flight. It was taken from the reserve car park and this is an area where they're often seen and photographed. This was my first time using the OM-1 for flight shots and I was amazed at the improvement in the autofocus. For this shot I was using SH2 which gave me 50 frames per second and flicker free shooting. This shot of fighting goldfinch and greenfinch was also taken in March but this time at my private hide just outside of Colchester. This was my first real attempt at using ProCap SH2 on the OM-1 and I used the 40 to 150mm f2.8 with the 1.4 converter. Using ProCap SH2 makes action shots of birds fighting relatively easy. The next picture was taken at Dollar Cove in Cornwall at the end of March. I was quite keen to try out the live ND facility which on the OM-1 will go down to ND64 which is 6 stops of neutral density. For this image I used a low viewpoint down on the shoreline and using the 8-25mm f4 lens I used these rocks as foreground interest. Live ND64 enabled me to get a long enough exposure to get movement as the waves receded. I was lucky that although it was quite a stormy sky I did get some colour come through as the sun started to set. In April, I drove up to the Peak District to photograph dippers. Although mainly shooting stills, I was also starting to shoot some video as well, and this shot was the first still that I'd extracted from a 4K 60 frames per second video. I was surprised at how good it was. My favourite shot of the day was this image of a dipper with a beak full of insects. This is quite a large crop from a shot taken as the bird was on the far side of the river and taken using the OM-1 300mm f4 with the MC-14 converter. I was lying down resting the lens on my camera bag. Early one morning in May I found this dew covered female scarce chaser dragonfly. It was taken at my local reserve using the OM-1 and the 60mm macro lens. Because I wanted to get a diffused background, this was shot wide open at f2.8 and using focus stacking to ensure subject sharpness, while still ensuring a diffused background. One highlight of 2022 was a trip taken in June to Bridlington to photograph diving gannets. This was with Mike Lane, Cossie Johnson and four other photographers and for this trip we hired the boat ourselves. Once the chumming session started, I took mo shots using the 12 to 40 mm lens because the gannets are diving very close to the side of the boat. Having taken hundreds of images, it was very difficult to pick out one shot that was better than the rest. This shot was my favourite. 
Later that day I went up to Bempton Cliff to photograph some of the other seabirds. I saw this puffin on the cliff edge and I wanted to get a shot of it in flight as it flew out to sea. I framed up the shot allowing space for it to fly into and half pressed the shutter button to enable Pro Capture SH2. Suddenly and unexpectedly another puffin flew in to land on the cliff and because I had Pro Capture running I obtained a sequence of pictures as it flew into land. This shot of a swallow collecting nesting material was another highlight of the year. It was taken at a location in Suffolk in mid-July. Because there had been no rain for several days, I took a container of water with me and poured this into a depression in the car park. I then sat in the car and photographed the swallows as they came down to the puddle to collect mud for nesting. This was the first time that I'd used the new 150-400mm lens which had arrived the previous day having been on order for many months. This shot of a superbike rider after he crashed was taken at Brands Hatch. Using the 150-400mm lens plus the 1.25 extender, it was taken from where the public stand and looking into Paddock's Hill Bend. From this position you can photograph over the top of the wire fence. After going full out along the main straight, riders will sometimes overshoot on this bend, so it's a good spot for photography. Fortunately, the rider got up and walked away unharmed. During the middle of October, I paid a visit to the island Mere Hyde at RSBB in Minsmere. One shot I've always wanted is a flight shot of Bitten in good lighting. Although I've been to Minsmere on numerous occasions before, a decent shot of a bitten in flight has so far eluded me. I'd taken shots of bitten before but they'd either been far too far away or in dull lighting. This morning was one of those lucky mornings when everything seemed to come together and this bird flew quite close to the hide in beautiful lighting. Using the OM-1 and the 150-400 with the 1.25 extender I obtained a whole series of shots that were pin sharp. At the end of October, beginning of November, we went away to Snowdonia and Anglesey. This shot of Linnea de Guarcan was a shot I was really pleased with. It was quite late in the afternoon and again using live ND, it enabled me to use a 10 second exposure. Although there was quite a ripple on the lake, the long exposure flattened the water out and made it look like glass. The last shot of the year is an image of a great spotted woodpecker in flight, photographed again at my local hide, and it's an image I've been trying to get for some while. In mid-December we had snow, which hung around for about four days, and this brought in lots of birds to the feeders, especially the woodpecker. Often, when the woodpecker flies off, it usually flies either away from the hide or at an awkward angle for photography. With this shot, the woodpecker had just come down and a sparrowhawk flew in after one of the smaller birds. This panicked the woodpecker and this time it flew towards the hide. Because the autofocus had locked onto it and I was using ProCap SH2, I obtained seven pin sharp frames before it went out of the viewfinder. The icing on the cake was the snow which gave an extra dimension to the image. All these images, with the exception of the woodpecker shot, have been featured in my YouTube videos, so I'll put links in the description to each of the individual videos. So which, in my opinion, are my three best shots of 2022? Bearing in mind that these are my own personal favourites, it will be interesting to see if others agree or disagree with me. I have placed them in reverse order. At number 3, Woodpecker in Flight. A shot I've always wanted to get and the fact that it was taken in the snow was a real bonus. At number 2, Fighting Finches. I have this shot as number 2 because it has instant impact. Even with modern cameras, it's not always easy to get the shots that have instant impact, but this shot certainly does. So coming in at number one, and my overall favourite shot of 2022, is Bitten in Flight. 
While some people may say it's just a bird in flight, it's not just any old bird. It's a bittern and they're not to a penny. And it's a shot I've wanted to get for some while. When you finally succeed in obtaining a shot that you've wanted for a long time, it's always going to mean more to you than any other images. So that was what I consider to be my best 12 pictures for 2023. Whether you actually agree with the final selection or the order of the final selection, maybe the finches has more impact or the woodpecker of taking flight in the snow. But the one picture I'd really wanted to get for a long time was the bittern in flight in really nice lighting uh, with a decent background and I got that this year. So that probably meant more to me than, than any of the other pictures. So it's the end of 2022. I've got more videos, ideas for videos for 2023 and I hope you join me then. So thanks to everyone who's subscribed. Thanks for all the kind comments and best wishes for 2023 and I'll see you then.